Hey everybody, this is Eric with programwitheric.com and today we're going over components in Ember. So components in Ember are self-contained code. They, you can encapsulate code in one place which you can reuse over your uh, application wherever you need it. It could be widgets, it could be custom tags, it can be a lot of different things. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that today. So if you saw my last video, we were messing around and playing around with templates. Uh, I've already created a new folder here by doing the Ember new my new templates folder. But since we already have it created, let's go ahead and create a new components controller. And for this new component controller, we'll go ahead and use Ember G component, and that'll generate all the files that we need. And we'll call it uh, fruit list. So we'll just have a list of fruit. We'll just make it really simple here. So okay, so the component's created. And so we'll go ahead and open up our fruit list. And you can see here the components here, there's nothing in here. So let's go ahead and create the array here. So we'll go array of fruit. And this property will have an apple, an orange, and a grape. Just to make it simple. And let's go ahead and take a look at this fruit list. And if you can see here, under templates components, this is where the HBS file is. So let's go and take a this is the handlebars file. And this is the this is going to be what's shown to us. So let's just for the heck of it, let's make sure it's working. So there's uh before we were talking about these double curly braces and what they do, and this is part of handlebars itself. And inside handlebars we can uh we have a few helpers, and one of them is the each helper. And this each helper it goes through and it iterates through a, an array or list. So we can go each array of fruit and we can call each of them fruit. And this is the syntax. You have to have this as here and these bars here. And then after that we can go fruit and we'll put in fruit here break and then we'll have to close the each. So let's go back to our application handlebars file and let's add our fruit list component in here. So let's see if it worked. Alright great so we have our welcome to ember and we have our fruit apple orange and grape. So they're all displaying here. So, but let's make it a little bit more complicated. We know we can go through and just grab in properties, and that's that's interesting. But what happens if we want to go ahead and just add our own fruit to the list? So we can put a comma here, and let's go ahead and create a new action. Get it all lined up. Actions. This is how you add actions in Ember. And we'll go add, and we'll just call it val. And inside the value, we'll just this, we'll do this dot get array of fruit. And we'll push object val. And I'll get back to what this means in a second. But let's just make sure it works. Let's go back to our fruit list here. And we'll create a new, and we talked about this a little bit before, this is an input helper. Call value equal, call it text value. And then once again we'll just create a simple button. Action. And we'll go ahead and send it to the add. And then just like we talked about in the last video, you can pass values in. We can also just grab this value inside our component, but just for the sake of simplicity, we'll just do it like this. Add 
button. We'll close our button and we'll add a break here. So let's see what it takes a look at, what it looks like. So we have a welcome to Ember here. And now we can go ahead and add fruit. So let's add in just a test to make sure we got this working. All right, so went ahead and added it. So now we have our component here and it's adding in our test. By the way, I have the inspector open here for Chrome, but we'll talk about that in a second as well. So let's go back to our fruitless component. And you can see here what this is, is we can't, the array of fruit here, since we're using uh, the ember component, we can't just go this dot array of fruit. That's not how we access it. We have to use, um, by convention, we have to use the get and set properties in ember. It's the same thing if we did something like this, ember dot get array of fruit. So we have to use this convention because this is actually part of Ember and we have to use the get to, to retrieve it. And then as well, since we this is an observable object here, since we're using Ember observables, we can't just do push here, which you would do normally in JavaScript. Um, the equivalent, since we're using Ember, would be push object. And then this will make sure that when this val object or whatever coming through here, this val will be added to this array and it'll be observable and that means that our template will understand that a new object was added and that it will be updated correctly. Otherwise, if we just did push here, the template wouldn't be updated. It wouldn't update correctly. So that's that's how that works. But Let's say in this example, we were inside our application here. And let me just save this. And we had two fruit lists. And we'll add a couple breaks in between. So you'll notice something interesting here. So we it it they both have the same information in here. They're both two components. They're the same component. But let's say we add a fruit here, fruit one. Did you see how it added it to both? So we're actually sharing state between these two. And this will happen whenever you're using component and you're uh, using objects or arrays. Um, they'll actually share the state here because they're not independent. And this is really bad. You shouldn't have this happen. You want your components to be independent and not to share state with other components. So to, to fix that, we can real quickly, we'll go over to fruit list and we can add the init object. And you have to really, to understand this, you have to understand the life cycle of, of an Ember component. But for now, we'll just add this in here. Uh, let's do this dot array of fruit equal and we'll equal apple orange and grape again and we can just go ahead and delete this and we'll leave all this the same and if we save it here we'll notice we nothing comes up so there's an error of some kind if you look in the console we'll notice that Assertion failed, you must call this.super arguments when implementing init in a component. Since we're overwriting init, which is a life is part of the life cycle of the component, we have to always run this super. And we can leave or leave out this arguments, but we'll go ahead and add it in here. And this is just uh, a spread of what this uh, arguments are to the to the super. So it's really calling the the components super um, of the init to make sure it's set up correctly. So if we save it here, now we have our fruits. If we add one in here, you see it added to this component and it did not add it to this component, which is exactly what we want. So now we can add a different one in here. You can say it added to this component and it didn't add it to this component, so we're not sharing state any longer. So that's really good. Uh, one other thing we can do we can actually pass an array 
from our application. And you'll fi find out as you as your applications get larger and larger, you're going to have multiple components. You're going to have components with inside components. You're going to be passing values from component to component. And things will get a little complicated. But we'll keep it simple here. Let's say we actually want to pass a value, uh, a list of fruit over. So we can do something like this. We can do fruit. We can do apple, orange, grape. And we'll just delete that. And we'll just have the second one right here. So we'll have two arrays here. Oh, two components here, that is. And both of them will be passing this fruit over. So instead of having us just hard code apple, orange, grape in here, we can do something like this. We can run, we can do this dot adders dot fruit. But if you notice, this dot adders dot fruit, this is actually, this adder dot fruit is this property that we're passing in. In other words, this apple orange grape is going to be passed into this dot adders dot fruit. But that's not exactly what we want. We want an array. So we can use something called ember.string.w. If you look at the ember string library, if you look at the API, you can see there's something called ember.string.w, and that splits a string into separate units separated by spaces and landing any empty strings in the process. So this will essentially create an array for us. It does it. It's basically the same as a split, and it splits on empty white space. So we'll just go with this. This dot adders at fruit. So now we'll see if that passed in correctly. Oh, see, there it is. So now we have the same thing we had before. And now we can still add it in. They don't share state. And just to, to prove that these are different, I can do uh, apple, orange, banana on the th second one. If we refresh, you'll see this is apple, orange, grape. But since we passed banana in, apple, orange, banana in this one, once again, they still don't share state. And one last thing real quickly we can do with components is if you look here and take a look at each component, you notice that they're a div. So they're both divs. But what happens if we don't want it to be a div? So one way we can do that is we can change the tag name of it. So we can just change the tag there. And it's let me look at tag name. And in the tag name, we can call it a span if we wanted to. And we can also add a class. So we can call class names. And it's an array of objects. So we'll just call Eric. So now, if you look again at our span, now it's a span, and you can see here in the class, it has Eric in there. So this is important later on, especially if you're uh, doing some more complicated things. You can go inside your component, you can change the class name when certain actions appear, you can make things fade in and out, you do a lot of cool stuff. So this is just a quick example of all the things you can do with a component, or just a few things, there's a lot more you can do, but hope this uh, helps you guys out, thanks. And one other thing, please make sure to subscribe below. And uh, if you haven't already, check out my Ember.js cookbook. Uh, links are in the description below. And check out my website at programwitheric.com. Thanks.